Crossroads Media. Did I expect to be sitting here discussing two wins in Kansas City? <laughs> Absolutely not. Especially not after Friday when Taiwan Walker sucked the life out of this team again. But to their credit, 22 runs combined between Saturday and Sunday. And JT, his presence felt bigger than we've ever seen all season. Seven runs batted in in one night. Ew. Two home runs. And his backup, Stabby, almost hit a cycle. All he needed was a home run. The triple was so absurd. Here's Kyle Schwarber knocking him in. And let's not act like Sunday was this game that had a good feel to it. Do you want to go over the low IQ mistakes? The dumb lack of awareness? Bryson Stott on the bases? Alec Bohm doesn't even remember how many outs there are. The game just started. How are you not mentally locked in? Is it because he was crying and pouting that he rolled into a double play? That he went over on Saturday when everyone was getting hits? Stock goes four for four. Even Stott came alive from the dead. And Bryce Harper has to put his arm around him. Rojas didn't take second base. Left a double play ball available when Marsh took off for third. What are we doing? And by the way, Allard is on the mound. No disrespect to him. His five innings pitched in two-word runs was great. But prior to Sunday's first pitch, you're telling me you felt extremely confident in his ability? I was hoping he could get us through a decent amount of innings to put us in a position to have a fight. Couple solo shots, but... Nothing hurt you that bad. I got to say, I'm proud of them. There's still a long ways to go until I feel I'm jumping back on to a different level, if you catch my sense. I'm a father now. I can't be idiotic. My daughter's going to think I'm an idiot. If I relay any sort of message similar to what I did after Miami and the Washington Nationals, I got to protect my image, people. I can't be looking like a fool. Good thing is, I haven't yet since I started this thing. You know what I mean? Boom, finally got going. Had a pair of hits. Three runs batted in in the series clincher. I definitely don't want to pick on negatives outside of Taiwan Walker, who shouldn't be starting ever again in a Phillies uniform. If you haven't checked it out, I posted my instant reaction post game on my WIP show over the weekend when Taiwan Walker finished up his day. I let him have it, okay? And a lot of callers did too. You should absolutely check that out in your subscription box. By the way, speaking of subscription boxes, if you hit the subscribe button and thumbs up button, if you're new to the channel, well, that would mean the absolute world to me. Thank you so much. You don't only have to be new to hit the thumbs up. Anybody can hit the thumbs up. But the subscribe button for all you new listeners, you guys are the greatest in the world. Thank you so much. The Taiwan Walker thing is reasonably picked apart. But if I'm going to look at everything I saw, I really despised Bohm's body language this series. I thought we were done with that. I thought Bohm has grown and developed past that. That raised my eyebrows. Maybe... Younger, raw, less, what's the, what's the way to describe this? Less experienced version of Alec Bohm. Maybe would have to find ways to control his emotions more. I thought we were done with that side of him. 
after the I hate this fucking place thing, that was sort of the grow up moment in front of our eyes. We can't be going back to pouting. He truly does look like the young kids that play the game where the parents have to come out to the mound and make you feel better because little Johnny gave up four earned runs in a third of an inning. You're going to go over. You're going to get mad. You're going to be sad. You're going to have all this stuff happening. You wear it on your sleeve a little too aggressively. And you have to dial it back a bit. Maybe getting a few runs batted in made him feel a little better. And then he comes back to Philly with a totally different perspective and not the same level of rage. He's not the only one, by the way, to... Definitely be super vocal out there. I was listening to Scott Fransky a bit because I caught the first four innings. I stopped by my uncle's place because it was my grandmom's birthday. Then I had a 50-minute drive to a second party, and I was listening to a lot of the game. So I did about 50-50. And when Scott was essentially discussing uh, Bryce Harper's at bat. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for half a second. But Bryce Harper had an at bat, and you could hear him loud and clear screaming the f bomb because he fouled off a pitch that he normally does some serious damage with, and then he eventually struck out. And after he did it in the box, he was also doing it in the dugout super intensely too. And it's not that I'm worried about guys showing that they care and showing that they have fire to them, but there's also a side of me that wonders if that's signs of cracking. Why is Bohm acting like a child again? Why is Bryce, you know, F-bombing to this level of oof lately? I feel there's F-bombs left and right. Tom McCarthy on the NBC Sports Phillies broadcast. Oh, oh, they laugh about it. Him and Croc. It happens a lot, a ton, and they haven't been playing up to their standard lately. It's been the complete opposite a lot of the time, a ton of times. So he's irritated. The team is angry. The team is holding the bat tightly. They're letting it show because they're losing their touch a little bit. That's how I read it. You could say, Broads, you are trying way too hard to get a solution, or there might even still be a group of fans that feel this team's still all right. And this was more of a hiccup and a little bump across the road. More so than it is there was a serious problem. So stop reading so deep into it. Shut up and watch them play at home. Great for you to have that type of mindset. I don't feel that way. And these two games won't sway me. It was definitely solid, though. I am proud of them, and it was an impressive series win. I didn't see it coming. It was Taiwan Walker. Think about the pitching matchup. That's why it sucks so much you lose to the Atlanta Braves. You didn't see Chris Sale. You had Zach Wheeler going, Aaron Nolan, Christopher Sanchez, and you still did a piss-poor job getting the result we were looking for. It's unbelievable. But in Kansas City, it's Taiwan Walker who blows. He should never get another start again. Oh, my God. Never, never again does he deserve a start. Anyone! But him, Ranger Suarez coming off of an injury, which was a huge question mark. And yes, yes, Ranger actually felt Ranger-ish again. It is five innings pitched. That was the most important takeaway of the entire series. Was I feel good about Rangers' next start? He still got a lot to prove, and coming back from a layoff that long, yeah, you got to work through the first start because now your body is reacting to that level of throwing again. What do you do the following time you grab the ball? Your body has to react properly. You have to go through those motions again and go through your regimen. Okay. I was worried that we'd get the dead arm looking Ranger. Lastly, you had to go back to Allard. So what are the odds that that staff and that three-man unit goes into a really rough KC squad? Because that's what you're running into. 
and delivers. Him and Ranger get you the dubs. It's nice when you have that level of run support too. And what we need to have happen is Brandon Marsh actually turn it around and be hitting the baseball. Bryson Stott gathering up all those hits. If that's what they do, this isn't rocket science. Some of your bottom of the order guys started to become the standard again. And the rest of the the team's identity changes. 